Dr. Ivo Orlov, one of the Gate Guys. You can find us on the web at www.thegateguys.com. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube by typing in The Gate Guys. Today's case comes to us all the way from Northern Ireland. It's an individual with pain at the first metatarsophalangeal joint, clicking in the foot, ankle, knees, hips, right-sided thigh pain, right-sided abdominal pain, and lower back pain. Let's take a look at this case. So starting out with our foot here, the first thing that we notice is that there's a loss of the medial longitudinal arch um, in this particular area. Slight dorsiflexion of the uh, tibia on the subtalar articulation, very mild prominence of the first metatarso uh, phalangeal articulation, and you can see some of the tissues, the long flexors and tibialis posterior in particular, are being tensioned uh, behind the medial malleolus in this particular area. When we switch on to an anterior view, we're reminded of increased tibial varum in this area, and um, we see weakness of the quadratus plantae muscle as evidenced by turning under of the fourth and third digits in this area. Um, the quadratus plantae augments the function of the flexor digitorum longus, and when that muscle is weak, the pull becomes more oblique, and the toes have a tendency to go um, underneath the foot. We notice slight eversion of the first, minute, uh, first met um, ray complex, or the first ray complex, with some increased spacing between the first and second ray. This is causing um, some flattening um, of the transverse arch in this area, which is enabling the foot to become a wider base so that it can obtain um, better purchase on the ground. From the outside view, we notice that the lateral longitudinal arch um, is missing as well. Here again, we can see that curling of the fifth and fourth digits, and we can see some overaction of the flexor uh, digitorum longus on both of these um, levels. We notice that the patient has to flex their uh, leg somewhat to get their center of gravity forward um, over the foot as well. From the posterior, we notice an increased calcaneal valgus angle in this particular area here. This we call rear foot pronation. The most common cause of that is a forefoot varus, where the forefoot generally is inverted. Here we see um, the forefoot firmly on the ground with our tripod between the head of the fifth, the head of the first, and um, the heel. In this particular area, uh, in this particular case, this edge of the tripod has fallen forward. That's causing some uh, collapse. If there was a, a large amount of midfoot pronation, we would see the navicular pushing out in this area here, and we're not seeing that. Looking from the top, again, we could see the spacing between the first and second toe and the curling of the third and fourth digits. We can see that the extensor digitorum brevis here is trying furiously to extend um, these toes, but to no avail, and that's what's causing this small amount of bulging in this area. We also notice a little splay of the foot due to loss of the um, medial, lateral, longitudinal, and transverse arches, and it's moving lateral. It's difficult to see, but there's also some medial rotation of the tibia, secondary to some midfoot pronation, which is occurring here. Let's take a look now at the left foot. Again, we notice a loss of the medial longitudinal arch. Not as much strain going on in the retromalleolar area. Here on the right foot, we noted much more tension um, located here. We can see some increased plantar pressures going on, heel over the first met, as well as the um, great toe. Much less anterior um, motion of the tibia is noted here, secondary to the patient being able to balance better um, on the left-hand side, suggesting that it is somewhat more of a, uh, a better um, support than the right side. You can also note here, looking at the large toe, that there's a small amount of eversion um, on this side um, seen as well. Looking from the anterior aspect, again, we see this increased tibial varum with some midfoot pronation evident here. There's eversion of the toe, but less than we notice on the right side. There's also less splaying um, between the first and second digits. There still is flattening of the um, um, anterior um, transverse arch. 
We also um, note curling under of the fourth and fifth digits, less so of the fourth digit um, on the left foot. Again, this is secondary to weakness of the quadratus plantae. Complete loss of the lateral longitudinal arch um, in this area here. Not quite as much overactivity of the flexor digitorum longus as we saw on the right-hand side. Looking from the rear foot, we have, again, this calcaneal varus. Um, this is to a greater degree than it is on the right-hand side. We uh, see this rear foot pronation occurring here. Again, a lot of times this is secondary to a forefoot varus deformity or overpronation in the midfoot. Some uh, pronation in the midfoot is occurring, but if it was overpronation, we would expect to see a bulge um, where the arrow is at at this point. Looking from the superior, again, we see a little bit of separation, but not as much as we see on the right foot, not as much um, lateral splay um, as we saw on the right foot either. Let's look at an anterior view. Again, we can see our tibial varum in this area here. Here's a really good area where we can see some of the midfoot pronation occurring. You can see that it's occurring to a greater degree here, and you can see the edge of the navicular on the foot here, whereas we don't see as much on the left side. We see this everted attitude of the entire foot. Remember that it eversion along with dorsiflexion and abduction are components of pronation. And we see this greater amount of pronation occurring on this right hand side. There's relative eversion of the first ray. And we can see the curling of the first and second toes um, as well. Viewed posterior, um, we see a greater amount of a rear foot varus or valgus, sorry, noted on the left-hand side uh, than we do at the right-hand side. This questions whether there's the possibility of a leg length discrepancy which is present. Again, uh, some tibial varying coming down, but not an excessive uh, amount. Looking at some non-weight bearing views here, right foot, what we notice overall is the varus attitude of the foot. If we were to draw a straight line across here, we would see that the foot is inverted with respect to that line. There is some plantar flexion of the first ray complex in an attempt to compensate for that, but he's not able to fully get his foot to the ground. This is what's causing that calcaneal valgus um, that we were seeing. See a similar situation on the left-hand side. Overall varus attitude of the foot. Here's the line to the ground, mildly plantar flex first. So we call this a partially compensated forefoot varus.